very, very cold. It was May 25th. Um, very cold in St. Petersburg. Um, we were wearing all winter clothes. And when we came to Vienna, it was 30 degrees centigrade. And um, we had no clothes to change into and no money to buy anything. So it was quite shocking. <laughs> and then, of course, seeing um, all the stores with everything that we saw in catalogs. And for some reason, I was not really surprised. It seemed very natural because I saw it in magazines. So that did not surprise me as much as um, summer weather. <laughs> so that, that's what I remember. But the, the sweating and uh, summer weather. And then I was in Vienna 19 years later uh, under very different circumstances, and I was thinking of, of that moment. It was really quite painful. <laughs> well, actually, Placido Domingo brought me there uh, when I worked with him on The Queen of Spades, Pico Adamo. Uh, and he was performing it in Vienna, and he asked me to come and uh, be his personal coach at, at the Vienna Staatsoper. And it was exactly 19 years later to the day. I was in St. Louis for two years. I went to school there, and then I, I got my bachelor's, uh, learned to drive, learned <laughs> some English. <laughs> and then I met um, a person who became my mentor and my very good friend, who was a very famous accompanist and um, played for most famous singers um, of the century, last century now. Um, and I knew his name from Russia because he played for Arhipova and Obrazova, John Wistman. He uh, was and is a very famous um, coach accompanist who um, worked with Luciano Pavarotti, played for Birgit Nilsson, Mera Lafreni, Renata Scotto, Carlo Bergonzi. So he was a very influential person in my life. He was one of the first people I met in St. Louis. Um, and then I went to study with him at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, and that's where I spent three more years before I moved to New York. Well, I don't teach the language itself, but uh, what I do, first of all, I do transliterations, uh, which is I take a Russian word and I transcribe it in English letters, but not the way it is spelled, but the way it is pronounced. So I sort of, over the years, um, created my own system of doing that. Um, so I don't teach them the language itself, but I teach them how to pronounce the language. And of course, we work on translation as well. Um, but obviously, they don't speak the language, but they sing it. Is it difficult? Yes, it is. Almost, yeah. I wanted to perform more as an accompanist. Um, I have done a lot of performing, and I still do, but it's not really... Um, something you can do 100% uh, of the time. You have to do some coaching. But I do like it, yeah, I do like it very much. I would say that my dream was to perform a little bit more than I do. So let's say 80% of my dream came true. <laughs> you know, honestly, I wasn't hoping for anything. I, um, I knew what I was leaving behind. And I had no idea what was ahead of me. But I knew that there was nothing for me there. My father passed away um, six years before we immigrated. And uh, it was me and my mother who was not very, uh, she was a very shy and passive person. So I felt no support of any kind. And I had no idea what I would be able to do. I never really felt nostalgia, but I always felt like I was missing my friends, and I, oh, I was always happy to go back and to see them. And this time I felt like, come over here. <laughs> you know, when we left, um, I could still communicate with my friends, and we would write to each other, even though it was kind of dangerous for them. But then after three years of being here, everybody stopped writing. Some of them were um, afraid, some of them were warned, not maybe specifically about writing to me personally, but I think the climate was so bad that all of them stopped any kind of communication. And, um, I still have all the letters that I wrote to them when we came here. 
So that would be interesting one day to read because I'm sure I don't remember um, a lot of things that I will find in, in my own letters. But I made, actually it was very interesting because I made sure that I copied every letter I ever wrote because I, I, I wrote very, very detailed letters of what was going on, where we were, how things were going, what was happening. So that actually made me think of that. <laughs> um, so th there is a story somewhere. <laughs>